Well, hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back to another exciting episode of In The Loop TV. I'm your host, Don Grant, CTC, Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another, I hope, exciting episode of In The Loop TV. Before we get started, please, just real quickly, it's, for, it's a formality, people. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share with anybody you think might gain from the knowledge we bring as a cutting tool company. This one, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I am gonna put three different subject matters up on the board here. Please click on the one that you think is relevant to you. It'll take you to that subject matter and you'll get to watch what you think is something that's relevant. So please, right now, if you get a chance, just click one of those subject matters, it'll take you right to it. Did you, did, did you click on it? Sorry, folks. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to hyperlink that to something else. Guess what you're gonna get though? You're gonna get the subject matter of helical interpolation. This episode's gonna be great because this is kind of a shout out to Barry Summers. Barry Summers on the second episode actually posted a comment. This is what I'm telling you. It's important to post a comment on what you wanna see. He posted a comment that said he wanted to learn more about helical interpolation, which he also said that that's part of our name of our helical brand. So he wanted to learn more about that. So big shout out to Barry Summers. Barry Summers, guess what? This one's on helical interpolation or ramping or how to get to a bottom of a hole or create a hole in a tool most efficiently. So let's talk about it. Let's not talk about it here. Let's talk about it next. So this episode, folks, is all about creating a hole most efficiently to get to the bottom of your material or whatever else. And creating holes efficiently is very important because I like to ice fish people and I'll tell you what, every time I go ice fishing, cutting a hole big enough to put that boat in is not very efficient. It takes me a long time. So we're going to get to the bottom of the hole in material a little bit more efficiently than it takes me to cut a hole to put the boat in. So stay tuned and let's talk about it. Not here. We're going to run to the shop. We're going to talk about it next. So where do we start with this episode? Well, the first thing we got to do is explain what helical ramping is, right? Helical ramping is basically taking an end mill and ramping it to a bottom of a pocket or a bottom of a hole in a helical fashion or in a circle to get down there. Now, there's a couple keys to helical ramping. Number one is you have to have a three axis machine. It has to run in three axes, which means X needs to move, Y needs to move, and Z needs to move simultaneously. So you have to have three axis capability. You can't do it on a bridge port or some kind of uh, regular uh, manual machine. It has to be a CNC machine. So when we're talking helical ramping and getting to the bottom of the hole, there's actually two different types of ramping, right? There's helical ramping and then there's regular zigzag or straight line ramping. We're gonna focus on helical ramping down at the bottom of the hole, even though we're gonna mention a few tips and tricks on regular ramping and how that works. But there's a lot of questions that come up when we're talking about helical ramping. First question I get all the time is ramp angle. What ramp angle do I use? How do I use that ramp angle? How fast do I run it? Do I reduce the feed? Do I reduce the speed? We're gonna talk about the design and the geometry on an end mill that creates the best type of ramping, whether it's straight ramping or helical interpolation, which we call for the ramping. You can also ramp by pitch. We're gonna talk about that. Instead of using an angle, we can use a pitch. There's so many factors that play in when we're ramping a tool to the bottom. We're gonna teach you how to do it most efficiently and tell you what some of the benefits are and give you some help all around with ramping. So stick around. So here's a question I get all the time when it comes to ramp and ramp angles. Everybody's like, hey, what will your tools ramp at? What will they ramp at? I've seen this other competitor tool. It'll ramp at 45 degrees. This one will ramp at 30 degrees. What will your tool ramp at? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. If you want to take one of my tools, if it's center cutting, you can straight plunge at 90 degrees. Okay? End of story. It's not always about the ramp angle, right? It's not how quick you can get to the bottom of that hole, but it's how fast you can get to the bottom of the hole most efficiently, right? And we're gonna talk about that because one thing that comes to ramp angles and when you're ramping an end mill, the bottom geometry of a tool is designed 
to ramp and sometimes it's designed to plunge. That doesn't mean it's the most efficient way to get to the bottom of a hole. Let's just start straight out of the gate. What's the most efficient way if you want to open a pocket to get to the bottom of a hole? It's not ramping with your tool. It's going to deteriorate your tool faster than anything. Why is that? Put so much pressure on the corner of the end mill. We don't want to put that pressure on the corner of the end mill if we can avoid it, okay? So the best and most efficient way to get to the bottom of a hole when you want to open up a pocket is to drill a hole. It's to drill a hole. That's the most efficient way. That being said, that being the most efficient way to get to the bottom of a hole, that doesn't mean an end mill can't ramp and it's not efficient if you don't want to change your tool holders and you want to leave that tool. They're designed to ramp. Some of them are designed to plunge. So what we want to do is teach you how to take that tool, get to the bottom of the hole most efficiently. And the first question we talk about is ramp angle. How do we determine a ramp angle for a tool? It's going to be determined by two factors. Two factors that we're looking at when we're trying to pick out a ramp angle. First factor, material. What material are we cutting? We've had so many discussions about material. What material are we cutting? Second factor for ramp angle is going to be the flute count. Okay? Flute count and material are the two factors that we look at to get to the bottom of the hole efficiently and pick that ramp angle. Now I'm going to tell you right out of the gate when you're picking a ramp angle and you're picking a tool to get to the bottom. Remember I told you we need to pick a tool. Some tools are center cutting, some tools are not. Does it make a difference? It does not. You're ramping. It's a helical interpolation with three axes. It doesn't make a difference if it's non-center cutting. The only thing the center cutting comes into play with an end mill is when you are plunging. You can't have a gash in the middle. You can't have an opening in the middle. You have to have a center cutting end mill if you are plunging. If you're not plunging and you're ramping, don't worry about it. We're just going to manipulate the angle. So folks, the biggest thing when you're helical interpolating or helical ramping is the wear that's going to be on the corner of the end mill, right? The corner of the end mill is taking the biggest beating. So what I'm going to tell you out there in YouTube land is please, oh please, if you're helical ramping or just straight line ramping, please put a corner radius on your tools. Don't use a square corner. It's not going to be very advantageous, and I'll tell you what, by the time you get to the bottom, that corner is going to be gone. Radiuses on the end of an end mill add strength, and especially if you're helical ramping, you're going to want a corner radius on there. So first of all, how are we picking an angle? Let's just pick an angle on a tool and give you some examples. I told you this is a shorter episode, so I can't give you all the information. If the material's harder, a little bit more difficult to cut, you're obviously probably going to add some flutes. If you add some flutes and you want a helical ramp down in there, you're going to have a low ramp angle. Let's say anything over five flutes, six or seven flutes, which you can helical ramp. Try not to go more than two times the diameter, okay? Three times is okay. The further you get down in the hole, the harder it is to pull the chips out. But if you're doing a helical ramp on a more difficult material and you're getting down there, you're looking at one to three degrees. And I'm going to tell you, six and seven flutes, you're probably looking at one to two degrees. Don't be afraid to go one and three quarters, one and a half degrees, but if it's six or seven flutes and the material's a little bit rougher, you're looking at one and a half degrees on that. Now, as the material gets softer and our flute count becomes less, again, we want to stick to that two times D, maybe three times D, that's the diameter of the end mill, to the length of it. But as that happens, our ramp angle can start coming up. So let's say softer material, softer ferrous material, we can probably get away with three degrees ramp on a four and a five flute. And then you're going to keep the ramp to one to three degrees on a six and a seven flute with harder material. So we can go up to three to five degrees. And when we get into the aluminums, Man, we can go five to 10 degrees. So your ramp angle is gonna get higher as your flute count gets lower and as your material gets softer. Can we ramp tools at 35 and 45 degrees on a regular basis? Absolutely we can. Is the sustainability gonna be there? Well, from a cutting tool counselor and somebody who's been doing that that long, you are gonna sacrifice the corner of the tool. Listen, I can take any one of my tools, put it on a YouTube video for 30 seconds and do anything you see on there, okay? That's fine. We're talking sustainability, people. So just because we can wrap at 45 degrees doesn't always mean it's the right thing to do. And if you're thinking of a two times D hole, you can get down there pretty quick by just accelerating your feed, use your surface foot, get down to the bottom of that hole just as quick as I'm wrapping it at 45 degrees, 
and probably get a lot more tool life. Well, let's just talk about speeds and feeds real quick because this episode's kind of dragging on. Real, uh, we spent a lot of time on helical ramp and I want to get into a couple other things. Speeds and feeds, what you're looking for is what I would always side with is backing off your speed. So your surface foot, your RPM, back that off by about 15 to 20% when you're helical ramping. Chips don't have a lot of place to go. You're gonna start making a slurry down in there if you start running your speed too high. So back your speed off, 15 to 20%, is probably good. Take your RPM down. You can leave your feet up there a little bit. I always like making a chip. Use that corner. L leave your feed somewhere where it's close, maybe 10% less on your feed than when you're going to open up the pocket down there. So reduce your speed 15 to 20%. Reduce your feed about 10% and you're gonna be in pretty good shape to get down to the hole pretty quick. Now there's two ways to actually helical ramp. We just talked about angle. Angle is a good way to do a helical ramp, especially on a helical interpolation. Now we also talk about straight line zigzag ramp ramping and we're gonna talk about opening up a hole. So here's what I wanna say. There's two ways to do it. Just like I said, angle, we covered. The next way to do it is by pitch or not to exceed a certain distance, okay? That's very important because if your hole is too big and you use a two degree ramp, you're gonna exceed the length of the end mill. So now you can use a pitch and pitch is actually how far do I wanna go in one revolution? So you can do it by angle, you can do it by pitch. You can also on a straight line ramp because we're getting down to the hole, you don't want to exceed a certain length. All your software gives you those options. If you're using a cam software, you're going to be able to see that they're going to ask you either angle or they're going to ask you for a pitch or not to exceed a certain depth. That's very important. So when you're picking an angle, it's going to travel at that angle for a full distance before it makes the full circle. So just be mindful of that. I don't want you crashing the end mill. I don't want you running into the shank and I want you to be efficient when you get down to the hole. So what kind of hole? What's the hole size? It's gonna ask you on a helical interpolation if you're opening up a hole, what's the hole size? Well, think about a half inch tool. You don't wanna make that line a half inch or greater. It has to be less than the tool diameter. I'm gonna tell you 0.8% of the tool is pretty good for actually creating that hole. So go 0.8%. If you start going over a half inch or the diameter of the tool, that's gonna leave a boss in the center. Not good. So make sure it's at least 0.8%, that hole diameter, 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 is probably a good general rule to create your circle for your helical interpolate to get to the bottom of the hole. Okay, folks, it's recap time. Okay, we're talking about helical interpolation or ramping or getting to the bottom of a hole using what? We have to have three axes, X, Y, and Z. The only way you're gonna helical interpolate or get down there is with three axes that can move simultaneously. We're talking about ramp angles. What a ramp angle do we wanna use? Well, if the food count is high, six or seven, you're looking one to three degrees. If your food count is lower and your material is softer, you can go three to five degrees. You get in aluminums, you can go five to 10 degrees. Can we go to 45? Yeah, we can plunge if you want. It's up to you. Straight plunge. Just make sure it's center cutting because otherwise you're gonna have a problem. If it's center cutting, you can plunge that thing at 90 degrees if you want to. What's the other thing we talked about? Oh yeah, you can do it two different ways. You can do it by a ramp angle or you can do it by a pitch, which means you're not gonna exceed a certain depth when you get to the bottom of the hole. That's it. That's it for this episode. Helical interpolating, done, ramping, slotting, different things that you can do with helical ramping. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanna give a big shout out to Barry Summers like I did at the beginning. This episode wouldn't be this soon if Barry Summers didn't put something in the comment that said, I wanna learn more about helical interpolating. Barry, shout out, thank you. Anybody else has any suggestions, please put them in the subject. Otherwise, please hit the subscribe button hit the like button, share it with anybody. And I got a little surprise for you folks, okay? In the Loop is gonna go to the manufacturing facility in Gorham, Maine. You're gonna get a tour. We're putting that together. Look forward for those episodes of us actually going to our facilities, giving you a tour and showing you how we make our product. Can't show you all the secrets, 
but you're gonna get an inside look. Love it, glad you stuck around, but before I leave, three things in life we'll never get away from, death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.